Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGateIt.com. Welcome to episode 12 of Shooting Cars, a show that comes out every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It teaches you how to take better photos of cars. Today we have a 2017 Honda Ridgeline, brand new, thanks to Honda USA for sending this out to me uh, for the week. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to get this really cool detail shot at night. Now the only lighting we're going to be using here are the headlights. They're really nice white LEDs uh, and this street light right here. So a lot of you guys have been asking me how to get cool night shots, how to shoot at shows, and uh, I'm not really great at shooting full cars at shows, but I can show you how to get really cool detail shots. So I'm gonna be going over settings here, uh, which are really important to get the sharpest shots. So using a polarizer, manual focus, setting a timer on the camera, and also our secret trick from last week, which is this uh, $5 or $3 poster board right here. So you can see that when I bring this out, we get a nice reflection in the grill. We also add a lot of light to the Honda emblem in the bottom right there. And so what I'm going to do first is compose my shot. To do this, I can either look through, you guys probably can't see, the viewfinder, or what I do is go into live view, uh, and then I'll use the flashlight on my iPhone right here to then set the focus manually, set my polarizer, and then find a good base exposure. So I found that 10 seconds f8 at ISO 160 works pretty well. Uh, and you guys are seeing this reflection because my phone. So that works pretty well, so I'm going to take a base shot right now. Um, and just so you know, the camera we're about to switch to is right below the 800 I'm shooting on. So let's switch to that. Okay, so we're on that camera right now. And when I take my base exposure, we'll see what the uh, lighting looks like. And this is just a good test kind of to see if you like your composition. Um, so you're not going to put it on self-timer yet. Make sure if you have a lens with VR, that you turn that off and make sure your lens is also locked on manual focus so that nothing changes between exposures. As you can see, this looks pretty good. The lights do have a little bit of flare, but I actually like that styling. Um, the Honda logo is pretty sharp, but what I'm gonna do is put the camera on self-timer and we're gonna get that set up. So I have a five second self-timer and this is just so when you hit the shutter button, the camera won't shake later on. So I'm going to do that and this is kind of like a mix of light painting um, plus you know, longer exposure plus the reflector board. So we are gonna slowly just kind of pan this over. And since we have a base exposure, we'll be able to mix the two later. So, so I'm gonna hit my shutter button now. I have about five seconds. We're gonna use the light that's coming off the headlight and we're just gonna kind of sculpt it around. And you can see this live, the reflections that are coming through. I wanna make sure to get both sides, utilize both LED headlights that we have. And there is our shot. So as you can see, really nice, crisp looking uh, emblem on there. Everything's really crisp in the grill. We have way more light now. This looks really good. It looks a little bit blurry. So I'm gonna play with my focus a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to set it on a longer self timer, make sure it doesn't shake. Might also be because of the truck, you can hear that it's running. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the lights on when it was off. So sorry if you guys are hearing that, but we're gonna take one more shot. And I want a little bit less of reflection in the actual Honda emblem. So I'm gonna shoot for that. So again, five seconds on the self timer. I'm gonna cut right in the middle so that the emblem doesn't get too hot from this. And by hot, I mean bright. And then take that away. And let's see. That looks a little bit better. You can see me in the reflection, so keep in mind you gotta be moving pretty quick here. But now I'm gonna take this into Lightroom, just do a little bit of contrast editing, maybe brighten up the right side of the image. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So now we are in Lightroom, and I'm gonna show you um, two different edits that I did of this image. So here you can see this is the original. Then I have edit one, which is a little bit lower contrast. You can see I got rid of the orange at the top here. I uh, brightened it a little bit. And then to clean this part up, I actually just darkened it a little bit. But this is just in Lightroom. We're gonna go to Photoshop to remove the reflection of me right here. And then I have this second edit, which is um, a lot less saturated colors more of a monochromatic type look. You can still see that it is saturated. It still has the orange and yellow uh, and the blue for my jacket. It's quite a few things, but I'm gonna start fresh with this first file. You can see there's nothing in the development. I'm gonna kind of walk you through yet another edit. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of the saturation a little bit on the top. So I'm gonna grab a graduated brush and I'm actually gonna brighten this a little bit. I'm gonna brighten it a lot so I can see where it's affecting. Sorry, and then I'm gonna get the saturation down 
pretty dang low here. And maybe just make it a little bit brighter. Could boost the contrast. And we can drag that right about here. Okay. So that's one. You can see here's the before. If it'll load, you can see the before, more yellow here cleaned up. So that's pretty easy. Then we're going to turn on lens corrections. Um, this you can do on import if you've seen the other episodes. And we can play with camera calibration. This is going to be at the very bottom of your Lightroom develop module. And you can see if you bring the saturation down, it doesn't bring the saturation of the whole image down, just of the blues. And this is kind of what gives you that cool, not black and white, but kind of desaturated to clinical look. This is usually done with the camera calibration settings. So you can see there's blue reflection here. There's blue here and blue in the headlight. I actually kind of like the more black and white look, so I'm going to do about minus 46 there. Then I'm going to sharpen the image, so I'm going to go to detail, bring the sharpening amount to about 70, and then I'm going to mask it. And what masking does is it just does um, sharpening only on certain outlines of shapes. And to see that, we can hold Alt Option, and we can move this so you can see everything in white is getting sharpened, but when we move it to the right, less and less things are getting sharpened. So here, kind of just the outline of the Honda emblem is getting sharpened, plus a little bit of the grill and the headlight, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to leave it there. And this doesn't make a huge difference, but when you zoom in on the, on the crop, um, it, it makes a nice touch. Now the next thing I want to show you is HSL and color. So HSL is Hue Saturation Luminance. Luminance is basically how bright a color is. And if you use this color picker tool here, we can pick this orange, and we can bring the brightness of that up or down. Or if we want to change the saturation of it, we can again use this tool and bring the saturation down of that orange or up. I want it down just a tiny bit. And you can see it's also affecting the yellows. If you look on the right side of the screen, when I move it up, this affects orange and yellow. And uh, I can select kind of where I want that. So I think right here is about good. I like that right there. And for the luminance, I actually want this silver to go up. Let's see if it will select a color in here. And it will. It's going to do yellow that it sees in there. So we'll bring that up. And here we can see a before and after. So you can see we have a lot less color in the image on the right. Although we still do have color, we have detail, we have the yellow on the ground still. You can tell it's lit by a street light. And basically we just have this reflection of me to remove now. So to do that before and after, by the way, I pressed Y. So we got that. And I think the image looks pretty good here. I'm pretty happy with it. If I want, I can play with the tone curve. So I can bring the shadows up or down by using this tone curve. And I can bring the, um, uh, rather, the shadows up or down up here. And this top of the curve is the highlights up or down. You can see in the top right of the image, the highlights are getting really white or it can make them a little darker. So you can see that gives a little bit more contrast to the image. I think it looks pretty good there. So this blue, I actually don't mind keeping it. It's not bad, but we're gonna take this image into Photoshop now, basically get rid of my reflection using the patch tool, and then we'll be done with the shot. So I'm gonna right click, edit in Photoshop CC, and we'll be set. Now while that loads, I do wanna ask you guys to uh, leave a comment down below and tell me what gear you have other than your camera and polarizer that I can utilize. So I know in the past few videos we've been talking about tripods, but let me know if you have any sort of lighting, speed lights, LED lights, your phone, because right now I'm trying to keep the cost really low so you don't have to buy anything when you watch Photo Tip Thursday's shooting car episodes, but um, I'm kind of running out of ideas, so if you have any requests for tutorials, please comment down below. Now before we actually get to editing this shot, I also want to show you uh, this cool night shot right here. So you can see I have the tail light from a third exposure. Then I did the reflection um, from another. So let me turn off the layer masks and kind of show you this breakdown. So let me disable that. Disable. So for the rear, I have the shot here and you can see the poster board was showing a little bit. So I had to get rid of that. So I did another exposure. And then I didn't have the top lid as much. So that this, this top exposure that you can see here, this layer that's on, this was for the Ridgeline logo and also for the bumper because when I lit the whole tailgate, 
uh, I got too much of the poster board down here. So I got that, and then I got the uh, red from the uh, brake light. So I just went in the car, held my foot on the brake, and I got that. It was a little bit too bright. I probably should have only kept it on for maybe a second out of the five seconds. I left it on the whole time, but I only took one exposure, unfortunately. And don't, uh, don't make the same mistakes that I do. Take multiple exposures and make sure you have various uh, brackets that you can play with. So anyways, I did that. Then I enabled layer masks and I put it together and that way you have uh, the tailgate lit, you have the bottom bumper lit. This is all just using the reflector board again. The car was parked in the same spot. And then we have the tail light. So I just wanted to show you that. So now we are on the emblem. And what I want to do is I kind of want to get rid of the reflection here and I want to get rid of myself for sure. So to get rid of me, I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to fill that up and I'm going to do content aware fill. Let's see if this works out well. Yep, that was beautiful. So for content aware fill, you can type in content aware or rather fill. And then when you press that, you go from foreground color to content aware and it'll be available when you have a selection made. So that looked pretty good there. Now I just want to get rid of me here. I know there's this blue line, but I actually do like the little touch of color that it gives, and I don't mind it. If I want, I could desaturate that using an adjustment layer or using a brush in Lightroom, but I really think that it looks fine and actually adds a nice touch of color to this image. Now I'm going to use the patch tool to get rid of my reflection completely. Not bad, but also not the best, so we're going to use the clone stamp tool. So press S, select the spot here, and brush it on. And now you can see we're good. So we just have the blue there, which I'm actually going to leave. So now I'm going to select this orange bit, and I think this might actually be part of the headlight. This is an orange part of the headlight, but I'm not a huge fan of it, so I'm going to see if I can get rid of it easily. And if not, it means it's meant to be. So let's see if content nowhere feel will work. Yep, it looks pretty good. And now we have our final shot. So that is the edit. Again, if you have questions, email me or rather DM me on Instagram. That's the fastest way to get a reply. And then of course, if you want to clean this up even more, we can go in and do content aware fill on all these little spots. But keep in mind, your photos don't have to be super clean, especially if you're just posting online or on Instagram, because nobody is going to be zooming in that close on the image. They're going to be seeing it about that size. So keep that in mind. That doesn't mean that your edits shouldn't be perfect. They should, but cleaning up little spots isn't all that realistic. And if you were somehow allowed to zoom in on other people's photos to 100%, you'd find a lot of things that they don't want you to know about. So little industry secret. So this has been a quick tip. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, utilize the car's headlights uh, and reflections on the post board. You can do this for emblems. You can do this for the rims. You can do this for um, door handles, engines, logos on the back, as you can see here. So a lot of different stuff that you can do with just a poster board or a reflector. If you want like an actual reflector, they're pretty cheap, it's like 20 bucks, get that online. But anyways, if you have recommendations for more episodes, please let me know in a comment down below. Hopefully you guys can see me, but I'm actually running out of ideas uh, for low cost shooting so I can get into strobe photography. And you know, I did a video on light painting, you can check that out on my channel, but I'm trying to keep it, you know, $5 or under right now. But if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. Send me a DM on Instagram at a car photographer. And hopefully I'll see you next week at 9 a.m. Thanks for subscribing.